All right, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make the standard four bearing spinner using on shape. So to get started, of course, we need a two dimensional sketch. So I'm just going to click on my top work plane here. So it's highlighted, right click and hit new sketch. We're going to name this spinner body. And I'm going to change my viewpoint to the top view. So we're looking face down on the top work plane. Now, if I go ahead and if I grab my circle tool, I'm going to create the top bearing here, top center bearing. So I'm going to click and then create a circle that is 0.87 inches in diameter. Now that is the typical size for skateboard bearings, but it never hurts to double check and measure your own bearings just in case it's a little bit off. I have seen them as small as 0.85 and some that are a little bit larger as well, but 0.87 is typically the standard size. Now before we move any further, I want to make sure that this bearing is going to be, or the spinner is going to be the right size. So I personally like spinners that are smaller than three inches. I think anything over three inches gets a little bit large and harder to spin around your hand. So I'm going to use this center line here as the bottom of my spinner. So I need to check the distance between the top of this and the bottom here. So I'm going to grab my dimension tool. I'm going to click on the top of my circle. And then I'm going to click on the center line. I can see that it's 2.8 inches or so. And seeing that we're going to add a little bit onto the outer perimeter as we design, I think 2.8 is just fine. I could click on this and type in an exact measurement, but at this point, it really is just a stylistic design here. So you just want to double check and make sure that the spinner is going to be about what you want it to be as far as size is concerned. Now we're going to go ahead and create the two lower uh, bearing holes. Now to do this evenly and proportionally so it spins, we're actually going to use the circular pattern tool, which is underneath the transform tool. If I grab the circular pattern tool and then click on our bearing hole, it's going to by default choose a radius for us. And then I can actually just pull in these bearings and again rest them kind of on the, or these circles I should say, and rest them on this horizontal line to keep everything nice and concentric. And then double click with the left mouse button to confirm. Now we have three evenly spaced concentric bearings or circles and I'm going to add one more circle hole right here on this blue dot which is the concentric center and we're going to go ahead and create another 0.87 inch circle for the center bearing. At this point it's kind of the stylistic approach. These circles are all evenly spaced and balanced so the spinner will function. So now you kind of get to add your own outer perimeter to design the spinner body. I'm going to keep mine rather basic for demonstration purposes here, but you feel free to do something a little bit crazy, some edges or some gears or whatever pattern you want to go ahead and create and really show the people that you actually went ahead and designed your own and make it, make it pretty cool. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to stick with the standard that you'll probably see that you could purchase. So I'm going to create additional circles around the outer perimeter of my three outer bearing holes. So here's what I mean. I just clicked on the center of this top bearing and I'm going to create a circle that's about 1.25 inches to give me an outer wall. And I'm going to do that again for the lower two. So again, 1.25 and 1.25. Now you'll see why I didn't make it exactly three inches initially when I put this top hole here is because we just added some additional length. So I know that the spinner is somewhere around three inches. I could measure it and I could click on these two to see what the overall dimension is. It's actually 3.5 or so, and I'm okay with that. You can go ahead and make it smaller or larger depending on whatever your preference is for spinner size. As long as the bearing holes are correct, it should be just fine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my three-point arch tool, and I'm gonna create an arch between the top hole and my bottom, and I don't actually like where I click, so I'm gonna hit escape and try that again. And I'm going to go ahead and create an arch between these two points. Here we go. This is a little bit better. Somewhere around a 1.5 radius or so. And again, it's, it is a stylistic design. Whatever you think really looks nice. But it does need to be symmetrical. So now, using the mirror tool, I'm actually going to mirror this arch on the right-hand side. First, I click on mirror. Then I'm going to click on the center line as my axis. And then I'm going to click on the arch I just drew. And I'll go ahead and duplicate that symmetrically on the other side. Now I have to do one more arch on the bottom here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my bottom two, and keep it nice and centered, and create an arch to complete my spinner body. Now using the trim tool, or the M shortcut, 
I'm going to go ahead uh, and delete the remaining circles here. So I have the overall spinner body and now we're ready to complete our sketch. If I go to the isometric view, we can go ahead and extrude this and I know that I want it to be 0.35 inches in thickness and we're going to name this spinner EXT just to keep it nice and organized. Hit the green checkbox to confirm. And now I'm going to add a nice little round over to round off the edges here, get rid of all the sharp edges. So I'm going to grab the fillet tool. We're going to name this uh, outer edge fillet. And if I click on the face, it's actually going to round over the bearing holes as well, which we do not want to do because then the bearings will not fit correctly. And also 0.2 inches is a little bit too much. I'm going to make mine 0.125. And because I can't just click on the face like this, because it'll make all of the holes, I need to manually click on just the outer perimeter lines for it to round over just the outer perimeter here. So let me just click on all of these outer lines. And I missed one to give us a nice 1.25 round. And now I'm just going to orbit around here and look at the bottom of my spinner and do the same to the bottom edge. And again, I can't click on the face because I don't want the bearing holes. I just want the outer perimeter, like so. I'm going to hit my checkbox to confirm and go to my isometric view. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually create the bearing caps. So it has to be in its own sketch. I can't put it on the spinner sketch. We also have the same properties as the spinner. And we're actually going to create the caps in two parts. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my top view, right click, New sketch. We're going to call this cap part one and change my viewpoint. And somewhere over here, I'm just going to go ahead and put my cap. So I know that the diameter of a bearing is 0 0.87. I'm going to make my cap slightly larger and make it 0 0.9. And again, this is kind of a stylistic thing here. You can really do whatever you want. And I'm going to hit enter. I put this a little close to my spinner. So I'm actually going to click on this, right click and hit Transform Sketch Entity and just move it a little bit farther away and double click to confirm. Now we're going to head and confirm, exit the sketch, go to an isometric view, grab the extrude tool, we're going to name this Cap EXT1, click on our cap and we want it to be somewhere around I don't know, 0.1 or I'm sorry, 1.1 or 1.2 inches thick, really however thick you want to go. I'm going to go 1.2 inches thick here and hit the checkbox to confirm. I think I typed that in wrong. Here we go, 1.2 inches thick. Sorry, 0.12 inches thick. 0.12 inches thick and confirm. And now we're going to make a sketch on the face of the cap. So I'm going to click on the face so it's highlighted. Right click, new sketch. We're going to say cap part two. Change the viewpoint here. And I'm going to find the center point using the circle tool. So see how it's snapped in there and I have my little concentric symbol. And we're going to make a peg that goes in the center of a bearing. So I know that the center of a bearing is eight millimeters, which converts to zero point about 314, 315 inches for the center bearing. I'm going to hit enter. Go to my isometric view. Exit the sketch. We're going to extrude this. Now we know that the overall thickness is 0.35, so we're going to divide 0 0.35 by 2. And we're going to get 0.175. So if I type in my extrusion as 0.175, I will name this cap 2 ext and green checkbox. And now we pretty much have our center cap. Now we're going to kind of add a little bit stylistic design here. So just like the spinner body, I'm going to put a round over. So I'm going to grab the fillet. We'll call this cap round or cap fillet. I'll make it 0.1 and I'm going to click on the bottom edge of my cap so it does a nice round for us there and then we're going to hit the green checkbox to confirm. 
Now I want to put my last name initial here, so I'm going to put the letter E on the bottom of my cap. So I'm going to orbit around, so I'm looking at the bottom of my sketch here. I'm going to click on the face of the bottom of my cap, right click, new sketch, we'll call this E. I'm going to grab the text tool, I'm going to write the letter E, I'm going to make it bold, hit the checkbox, and we have to fit it into the right location here. So go ahead and grab my transform tool and move the E and center it in the cap, just like so. Hit the checkbox to confirm. Grab the extrude tool, click on the E. Now, of course, we don't want it to be three dimensions. We're actually going to use the remove button to cut into the spinner cap. And we're going to do something around like 0 0.06 inches here to cut a nice E into our cap, like so. I'm going to go back to my isometric view. And we need two caps, one for the top, one for the bottom. And I'm going to click on part two because that's what the cap is. Part one would be the spinner. Part two would be the cap. And I'm going to right click and hit copy. And now the transform tools appear and I can just drag and put this cap on the other side in about the same location. Double click to confirm. I'll click the checkbox to confirm. And that's about it. So now we have the standard basic four bearing spinner two caps ready to go. If you have any other questions, you should check out the other on-shape tutorial videos in the Digital Classroom Library, and there you go.